for everybody else, if you're on YouTube today, if you're just joining in about over enchanting, leave us some ideas about over enchanting. Do you think over enchanting is good? Do you think corrupted dropping their items should be permanently destroyed? Do you want Intrepid to take a look back at uh, temporary repairability or a fixed number of repairs or basically anything else you want to talk about the enchanting system? Leave us a comment. Now let's jump in and talk about it. We're going to talk about enchanting. Now, a couple of things about enchanting is some people are confused or angry or concerned about over enchanting. So one of the one of the things about every MMORPG is that you have to have a robust economy. Now, one of the things that Intrepid had talked about was a permanent um, a permanent destruction of gear. Gear would only be allowed to be repaired so many times. And then after that, you that you couldn't repair it anymore a, a fixed durability on gear is a good thing now when i talked about this and i advocated for it once before a lot of people completely lost their minds and they said absolutely not gear should always be repairable and i said well why and their complaint was they were afraid that they were going to spend as much time grinding for new gear as they were playing the game and I, I said, like everything else I say, that's a little ridiculous. You're going, you're, you are going to a absolute extreme with your concern. I, durability can be tweaked, tuned, made better, made worse um, in alpha testing. But Intrepid said, nope, gear is going to always be, uh, always be repairable. Now, what this does is it creates a problem with your artisan system because at, at first, the people who get high-level crafting, they're going to make a bunch of money. The people that can outfit the early level 50s are going to make a bunch of money. The problem is, is once everybody has their best in slot and they're only doing minor upgrades, the system breaks down. Um, sure, there's going to be a little bit of demand for um, processed goods for new crafters that are trying to get to 50. Uh, there's going to be some demand for gatherers, especially if Intrepid can manage to keep low-level items relevant, then that'll be great. But ultimately, the problem, the difference becomes, I'm a brand new level 50, I need 12 pieces of gear, I'm one of 10,000 brand new level 50s, right? So you're talking uh, 120,000 pieces of gear versus now there's just a trickle, Right? Now, couldn't repairable still mean a system where the gear requires artisan skill? Sure, absolutely. And it absolutely will. Gear to be repairable isn't just go to a vendor and hit repair. Hit repair. You actually have to go to an artisan who has the ability to make the item for them to repair it. However, the amount of resources necessary to repair a piece of gear and the amount of resources necessary to essentially recraft a piece of gear will always be lower. So the the ultimate problem becomes how are we going to keep this system healthy? And what Intrepid has decided to do is they're going to have an enchanting system that has over enchanting, which means the item gets destroyed. Now, ultimately, for those of you that have never been on the show when I've done this um, breakdown, is you're going to have something that looks a little like this. At the bottom here, you're going to have your, your safe zone, right? You're going to have your plus zero to your plus four, plus three, plus two, plus one. And this ultimately is going to break into, if you have the mats, then your enchant is successful. Right? So there's no risk here. Now, when you move into the next category, you you move into you move past this yellow line and you move into plus five, plus six, and plus seven. Right? And what you have here is moderate risk, right? So this is moderate risk. And this is you can fail, but your item is not destroyed, only downgrades. Now, this is frustrating when you're trying to go from a plus four to a plus five and it fails and it stays plus four. When you're, when you're a plus five trying to go to plus six and it fails, 
it goes back to plus five or it drops to plus four. Th this can this can be really frustrating, but you didn't lose the item. Where, where people are concerned is they're concerned with this plus eight and above. And we're for, just for the sake of everything, we're going to say that there's only, and they don't want to have too much over enchanting, but we're going to have plus eight and plus nine, right? There, so we're going to say that there's 5% and 10%. So, and these are just numbers. I'm making these up just along the lines of the sentiment Steven has said, a plus seven to a plus nine, there's a 10% difference. It doesn't even have to be that big, but let's just say it is. But here's the problem. If you fail, item is gone. So if you if you are at plus seven and you try to roll the plus eight and you fail, that's it. Item's gone. If you're at plus eight and you try to go to plus nine, you fail, the item is gone. Um, on that plus eight and plus nine, are there normally built in ways to increase your success chance normally? Um, I mean, you can. You can do lots of things as long as you don't do a pay to win charm like Archage has done or BDO has done, then there's absolutely no problem with a system like this, right? Fail stacks, no, because there's no, there wouldn't be fail stacks. If it failed, it's destroyed, period. You're done. Now, some people have said, well, I don't want to keep having to go from plus seven to plus eight. Well, then don't. Well, that, but I'm going to fall behind. Yes, because there, there has to be a risk. There has to be an inherent risk to getting the very best gear. Because if you don't, then what you're really asking for, at the end of the day, you're asking for normalized gear. Do I hate rolling a plus seven staff to try to get a plus eight? Yes, I do. But what do I do with that plus uh, seven staff? I do the laddering method. So what I do is before I, before I take a plus seven to a plus eight, I already have a plus seven and this is my new one. Maybe I do three of them because I know if I get two to go to plus eight, right? If I go to two to plus eight, then I'll be able to keep one at plus eight and roll one to plus nine. That's laddering. But every time I break one, right? Every time I break one, then what I'm doing is I'm going back to this system and I'm putting a queue into, I'm putting a work order into queue. Hey, I need a level 50 staff. And then if they have gotten this, right? If they have gotten this done right, then that means my level 50 staff requires level 10, level 20, level 30, level 40, and level 50 processors and gatherers because every piece is going to roll up. Does the recipe for items get destroyed after a while or am I misremembering? If so, how does the impact the fact that the artisan needs the recipe? You do not need the recipe in order to craft it. Once you know the recipe, you know the recipe. Now, in Alpha 1, they showed blueprints. That is an interesting way to go about it for legendaries. And they haven't talked about those blueprints again. But, yes, that would be a um, an extra gold sink. For those of you that didn't play Alpha 1, what you needed was um, when you went to a vendor... They created, they made it so crafters don't have the infinite profitability that they have in other games. So you have your gatherer, you have your processor, and you have an item, right? And then you might have a second logistics chain for gatherer process and an item. And then from the vendor, you needed a blueprint. And every time you crafted it, you needed the blueprint. Now, that's really smart. There's also another direction you can go with this, and this is the EVE Online direction, and you can make the blueprints permanent, and you can make them researchable. I don't know if Intrepid will go that route, but I definitely think they should. I definitely believe that Intrepid should have the blueprint start, this iron sword needs 10 iron ingots, but instead of you being able to craft right now, you dedicate your crafting queue into a research queue on your blueprints. So this now makes nine ingots, eight ingots. The problem with that is in EVE Online, items are permanently destroyable. Everything is permanently destroyable. Modules, um, the ships, the ammo is consumable. So what happens is in EVE Online, you have a constant low level item stay relevant 
if you were to do blueprint researching, and I know a lot of people have asked me about that, the problem is now you're affecting, you're affecting this menu. You're making gatherers less useful and processors less useful because of course high-end crafters looking to maximize their profit are going to um they're going to research their blueprints now another thing i've heard people talk about instead of over enchanting they said well processors could get better at their ratio sure gatherers could get better at their ratio so when you hit an iron ore you get one iron ore but i'm level 50 when i hit an iron ore i get two iron ore People are like, yeah, that sounds great. And I want to remind you that is the absolute worst way, the absolute worst way to do it. Giving more resources the higher level you go is horrible because of this. Supply and demand, right? As supply goes up, demand goes down, price goes down. This is, this is just textbook Adam Smith, The Wealth of Nations. As the supply goes up, the demand goes down, the price goes down. Also, the demand can go down, right? Even if the supply stays static. The supply can stay static, the demand goes down, the price goes down. When people say supply and demand, it, it really is, and I say this and I because words matter, it shouldn't be supply and demand. It really should be demand and supply equals price. Because the demand can go up or down for whatever reason it wants. The demand can go down based on supply or the demand can simply go down. Um, do people still buy eight tracks? No. So the demand for eight tracks goes down. Sure, the supply of eight tracks is really low, but the supply is low because the demand was low. The price now, when somebody wants one, since the demand went down, the supply went down, the price went, the price went up because the supply went down. So when there is a demand, when a demand queues in, you can only get it at the high price. Demand is affected by your usefulness. Um, demand is affected by a lot of things. Uh, a lot of people are like, and I did a fear of missing out forum thread and somebody's like, well, you just contradicted yourself. And I said, no, I didn't. You have to, um, you, you have to understand that um, fear of missing out isn't a marketing strategy when supply is low. Because when supply is low, you don't market it if the demand is high. If the supply is low and the demand is low, you have to market it. Marketing is only tied to demand. I want to drive the demand up. If the demand is up, I'm not going to do advertising. If the demand is up, but the supply is exceeding the demand, I'm going to do advertising to sell, to get my inventory down. It's like, you notice that you don't see a ton of advertising for NVIDIA graphics cards. Why not? Demand is high, supply is low, price is high. They sell the ones they have. Thank you. I hate those supply demand charts that only chart supply and demand, not price. No, you, and again, you can't talk supply and demand. Um, you can't talk supply and demand without talking about price. Um, period. So this reminds me of my business class in my secondary school where my teacher got it completely wrong. So. Fear of missing out, one of the main uses in gotcha mobile games. Yeah, it, it is. But so here's here's that thing, ready? You can either have uh, finite repairable gear equals um, kueways on crafting process. Or I'm gonna call it, I'm not gonna call it the crafting process. I'm gonna call it the logistics process. The whole gathering process craft process. Because remember, you can only master one side of the pyramid. Or one thing Intrepid is doing, Intrepid is doing uh, items for repairs and crafter for repairs. So keep that in mind. The over enchanting isn't the only um, the only influence on the system, but ready? Nothing. Let's actually do nothing. Will stress the system more than lost, dropped, destroyed gear. Nothing puts as many kuweiways and, and items in kuweiway. I just like kuweiway. Q. Nothing puts as many items into Q as lost, dropped, or destroyed. I actually argue. I want to make one change to the corruption system. I don't think gear dropped by the corrupted should be recoverable. I think gear dropped by the corrupted should simply be destroyed. Because again, that's another way 
that's another way to put stress on the system. Now, somebody said, is there going to be uh, over enchanting in legendaries? Yes, there will be over enchanting in legendaries. If somebody wants to go five to 10, and these numbers are mine made up. If somebody wants to go five to 10% over a plus seven on an item that's already six to 12% over its epic peers, then that person is risking a lot. You are, you have the one of a kind, only one on your server, legendary, unique Jalan six barrel pistol. You have it at plus seven. You're already doing a ton of damage and you want to roll that to plus eight, you should, you should definitely be messing some people up if you took that pistol and you rolled it to plus eight. You decide to roll it to plus nine? Yeah. Price is the y-axis on any standard supply curve. So I don't know where you sell them without it unless it's shorthand. Price is literally the way the chart is. Um, no, that's not um, on a supply demand curve. Um, because if it's a supply demand curve, you have to have supply and demand. Now, if you're talking about a dual Y access, sure, but you can't chart supply and demand. And please keep in mind, if you're going to bring that, I'm an economics teacher. So, so, so please, please make sure you give me an example. Um, a, a supply and demand curve can't have price on the Y axis because what X would be demand. Y would be supply, right? That it, now you're absolutely right that if you're doing it, you can do it with two Y's. Um, but when you say a supply demand curve, supply demand, demand supply, you've already used both axes. Um, so price gets either inferred by, and I know where, I know where the commenter is going. Cause I've seen it taught this way. Price gets inferred, which it should never be. It should be charted that way. Um, a bar graph is a much better way to chart supply, demand, and price than um, a standard XY chart. Red's destroying gear also gets rid of the buddy, kills them, and picks up their gear. Yes, absolutely. And that's, remember we talk about in Ashes, we talk about Ashes uh, as, a, as a theme box, right? We talk about Ashes as a theme box, and in that theme box, one of the themes is the corruption system, right? And one of the themes is the death and dying. Just call it D&D, &D, death and dying. So when you change uh, corrupted dropping the gear and it's destroyed, you change this system, you change this system. Maybe if the items are dropped and destroyed, people are less likely to go corrupted it, when they have their best gear on, they're like, man, I would really kill that guy right now. But I don't, I'm carrying my good gear. He gets a free pass. Spending resources to clear the corruption would deter it, but not remove that loop. I think that's too much. We talked about that once before. I think spending resources to clear their murders is good. So what you guys, it, to talk about how everything touches everything in corruption, when you die or when you kill, you get murders on your soul. You also get corruption. The amount of corruption you get is a mathematical equation based on the level differential of you to the target, how many murders you have on your soul. I think spending resources to clear your soul is, is one way that you could do it because then that again is another way that you're interfacing with this system right and if you they could get clever with that right uh they could get clever with that where the items required for you to clear your murders are representative of the items of the items that you stole right so i could see it as a, a funny never ending cycle of a item sink where you killed a guy and you got you got 10 corn from him right now when you die you dropped four of that but because you killed him and got 10 corn you have to pay five of it to the murder clear person leaving you at a a loss of you you essentially got one corn out of that ordeal because you dropped four when you died 
leaving you six. You owe five. You owe five to the priest to to wipe your soul. So you did all that murder for one corn. Again, would more disincentivize people from killing randomly, and the person to be like, all right. So when I kill this person for ten gold ore. I'm going to need five to clear my murder charge, but I'm still going to get five. And maybe it doesn't have to be that much. Maybe it's two. Systems interfacing each other makes for a great game. Doom Eternal did a great job making all the powers of the Doom guy impact another power. I haven't played Doom Eternal yet. Yeah, I remember, uh, what was that from? Um, that was from just his original Chris Rock routine in the 90s. I would blow your head off if I could afford it. I'm going to put some bullets on layaway. You better hope I can't get some bullets on credit. But right about now, uh, what do people think about over enchanting or item sinks? Let's talk. Let's talk over enchanting. Let's talk item sinks. Should Intrepid allow over enchanting? Should there should there only be should there only be green and yellow on the over enchanting? Should you never be able to lose items or should that be that those who risk it get the biscuit part? I think that's really the big one that Intrepid needs to know. Should this section of the chart exist? Should you be able and I'm not I don't want to see us out. I don't want to see a system where you can go to plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13. I don't want to see that. I want to see like, you know, one to four is safe. One to four is safe. Five to seven is you'll downgrade and then really eight and nine over enchant. I don't think we need to have more than two over enchanting levels. That's another one. How many over enchanting levels should we have? So this game for the king has no durability on rare gear and limited uses on epics. That cycle would keep MMO hardcore players wanting the meta logged in. Um, I talked about I talked about that and Intrepid is also um, Intrepid is also making it so that like you you have this rare item but you know that the only way to repair this item is to get another one of these and the fact that you got a legendary book drop number one the server may not drop another legendary book so you know right away when you get this item you look at the um you look at the repairability and you're like man that requires another brown journal of the jalan dungeon well, I'm only gonna use this. I'm only gonna use that to defend my throne or defend my node. So people are gonna be like, "Hey, why aren't you using the seven barrel?" Because, man, it's like um, if you saw the drive angry. It, he's got the gun. It's got four bullets in it. That's all he's got. Um, I, I'm not using it because I can't repair it. First time caller says, "What do you think about having a level of corruption being applied to the item when the corrupted player is killed instead of dropped? When the item gets permanent 10% durability loss per level of corruption." First uh, way to make item just change hands, where corruption level eventually makes the item worthless. So that's not a bad idea for a game, but that I, that idea only works if you're going to develop a permanent durability for the entire game. You would be spending a lot of time developing a system that would only be applied to a small number of characters. With that said, I absolutely believe in permanent rep repairability. I, I absolutely believe in permanent repairability. Um or sorry, in a, a maximum repairability, only so many times. I think your idea is great, but the Ashes of Community has already said no. A lot of devs deal with the don't let players be stupid issue for several game systems, but screw it, let people learn. I agree with you. Um, inherently, I don't like item destruction, but I feel the way you explained it made a lot of sense. If there was a hard cap on enchanting eight or nine, then I think there should absolutely be risk or reward. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to play a game I don't want to play a game where starting at eight, I have to roll it and it goes from eight to like 15. Then I feel that the, the, the seven isn't competitive with the 15 and people, and that's BDO. That's Arc Age. Well, it's old Arc Age. The new Arc Age has got the Hiram gear. Um, but no, I don't want to be in a situation where luck continuously beats me up because I I'll give you guys a story from Arcade real quick. I had an entire chest full of gear to regrade during a regrade, double regrade event. I didn't get one single piece that I needed. Guy in my guild had one set of gear and he rolled his entire set of gear to um, uh, Divine. Literally, whatever it was, seven charms, 
Seven charms, seven scrolls, seven for seven, got all divine. I was mad as a hornet. What about bind on pickup? I think you should be able to sell that plus nine. You can. Um, very few items in very few items in Ashes of Creation are bind on equip or bind on pickup. Very few. When an item gets destroyed, it would want to keep the transmog option. Um, I'm of two minds on this. I don't think that you should be able to have the transmog option for legendary items, but I think if this is my legendary item, um, I think if this is my legendary item, when it's destroyed and I can no longer use it anymore, it should destroy to a, a, a mantle piece or a wall hanging. Um, I, I think that allowing people to transmog to legendary weapons is going to be confusing. Um, because I no longer, I no longer have, because a legendary item is six to 12% more powerful. Um, it, letting people see it. Yeah. Legendaries. No, everything up to Epic. Yeah. Everything up to Epic should be a transmog. Legendary should become trophies. Um, not, um, not transmogs. Um, Will you need plus eight, plus nine to do end game content or should the design be everything up to plus seven? You would do everything up to the plus seven. Those who risked it and got the plus eight, plus nine are doing the content easier. They've got it on farm mode. So uh, if my item gets destroyed, do I get any mats back or is it gone kaput? Um, it's gone. You risked it. You rolled it. You risked it. Um, it's destroyed. It's Star Trek Online or Champions Online, and they monetized it by selling crafting boosters, protectors for gear mats not to be consumed. Um, they're not going to do that because Steven uh, would automatically classify that as pay to win. So it, at the end of the day, I have faith in Steven. Like, I believe in Harvey Dent. I'm Bruce Wayne. I believe in Harvey Dent. I believe in Steven Sharif. I don't think that... Um, I don't think that Steven's going to bone his own game because the moment they put in regrade protectors into the cash shop, that's it. They're done. Th they're done. Um, how do I feel about legendary uniques? I love the idea of legendary uniques. I absolutely love the idea of legendary uniques. And the problem is a lot of people don't because a lot of people are participation trophies. I hate WoW. I absolutely hate WoW. And for what they did with the legendary called the Thunder Fury, I think I think you've all heard of it. Um, I hate the fact that it's a legendary item that everybody has. I like the idea that only one person can get it. Um, I'm okay with that. Is there raid gear or crafted? There's both. There is raid gear and there is crafted. So, give me an example. You defeat me in my collection of cats, my my sprockets. And you raid the steampunk tower, you beat the steampunk sniper, and you take his pistol. My pistol drops this run. This pistol's gonna have random stats. It's gonna have random stats on it. So the stats are gonna come be completely random and garbage. Um, so you might get agility, um, healing output, and magic crit on the pistol. And you're like, well, that sucks. Now you run it three more times and you get three more versions of this, the, the legendary, well, it, legendary unique. Um, pretend I didn't say this was for legendary unique. Oh, this is for raid, raid gear. Yeah, we're good. We're good. My brain. So you run the raid, you get the pistol, bad stats. Next week you run the raid, you get the pistol, bad stats. Third week you run the raid, you get the pistol, bad stats. Fourth week you run the raid and you get the crafting mat. Now, when you take that crafting mat to the crafter, What's going to happen is you're going to say, I want this with mage stats. And so your crafter is going to say, or your crafting department is going to be like, okay, that guy over there is a, is a high magus in the scholars Academy. That's not traditionally a mages ranged weapon. However, that person has the wheels that they can put intelligence magic crit and magic attack on that pistol that's the difference between raid gear and crafted gear raid gear is going to drop with random stats so how many guilds will give the same person the same piece of gear more than once well i never said that i never said that the same person would get the same gear more than once i i said the pistol drop the pistol drop the pistol drop they're getting passed out remember gear isn't bind on equip so a good guild, right? 
a good guild is gonna say, you have that. This just dropped. You turn in the one you have, fully repaired. We swap this one to you because this is more, um, this is more fitting for you. You give me the one back and we do something with it. But now that's it. We're done. Um, craft commissions, risking scams. Yes, there is the escrow system. So, um, you put in the book, the iron, the whatever, you put everything in, and then you put in my tip, you put in my gratuity, I hit craft, the items never left your backpack, you get the item delivered. Do I like this system? As a player, no. As a gamer, yes. What's the difference? As a player, I think there should be inherent risk of being scammed. I, I absolutely do. As a gamer, I understand nothing is as frustrating when you get scammed. When you get scammed like that, um, there is nothing more frustrating than you got scammed. And I totally 100% un understand that. I, I think, excuse me, I think the taking out the ability to be scammed means you don't have to develop those lifelong relationships with people because you're just going to um you're you're just going to put the items into the the crafting um chest and um or the crafting box and you don't particularly really care what happens after that um so I love the drama and think scams are hilarious, but it's not worth the player population going down one every time it happens. Yes, absolutely. And then, for example, in Arc Age, there was a time where a streamer got scammed and the GMs refunded the items. And I called the GM team out and I, I said, wait a minute, scamming is allowed by your own terms of service. All right, uh, let's see. I think there's too much of a chance that a player getting scammed rage quitting and losing that customer. However, do you see your point in wanting a more relationship realism system? Yes. Um... One of the things that I always did, um, I always gave the person 85% collateral. So I give you 85% of the fair market value of the items so that you felt comfortable. But then again, I would never, I would only ever steal back if I had to. I would never steal from a player because I feel that the reputation loss is too much. I feel that if you always deliver, I think if you always deliver, you build a good reputation. If you're sketchy, and I want to remind people, so I saw somebody says, what if they, like, what if they steal the book? What if they ninja loot the book? This is not going to be a game where you want to be known as a ninja looter because you're going to be put on people's lists and then you're going to be like, hey guys, I need a raid. And they're going to be like, no, not you. Not you. Nope. Not you. So. With that said, for everybody else, if you're on YouTube today, if you're just joining in about over enchanting, leave us some ideas about over enchanting. Do you think over enchanting is good? Do you think corrupted dropping their items should be permanently destroyed? Do you want Intrepid to take a look back at uh, temporary repairability or a fixed number of repairs or basically anything else you want to talk about the enchanting system? Leave us a comment. Now let's jump in and talk about it. We've reached the end of another video. Time to thank the sponsors. Yes, that will do, that will do. Shall we pop off for a spot of tea?